Hey guys, welcome to another episode of John Fixes Everything. I'm John and I fix everything. Today I've got my Pullen Pro 19 and a half horsepower riding lawnmower. This thing farts and pops and burps and does everything you would imagine if you didn't maintain your stuff well. What I want to show you today is how you can fix it really simply and easily with a Chinese carburetor. Now, follow me here. If you didn't maintain your item well, you didn't use good gas in it, all of the other things that you've tried don't work, this may be a great option for you. It's literally just a couple bolts and a few connectors, and we can replace the carburetor for about 20 bucks with an import knockoff. That said, this is not something you should undertake as just standard maintenance. You should maintain and drain your carburetor bowl, run the thing out of gas completely before you put it away. But if you haven't done that, this can be a good option. So what are you gonna need to do this job? Well, Chinese carburetor. Comes usually in a kit with an air filter and a few other parts. Some basic tools and a tool kit. And I'm gonna show you how to get to it right now. So where is your carburetor? Well, in this engine, it's right here on the left side of the engine. You can lift this up and remove the air cleaner cover. And you can see that one's looking a little rough already. So this is the older one and they include a brand new fresh air cleaner and foam filter. So we're gonna throw this old one out when we're ready or another foam filter it looks like, and that thing's already been chewed up. It's got a couple holes in it, pretty sizable, so that's already not doing its job as a filter. Okay, now we're gonna have to take the top cover off of the motor if we wanna get to everything and see everything. So that's gonna be a few bolts back here. I'm gonna use my regular standard Crescent tool kit and we're gonna get right on that. Okay. This is my very well beat up and used Crescent toolkit. The thing I like about it is it's a take anywhere kit. It's got all of the standard sizes that you're going to need. It even has half inch. So if you're working on some big stuff, generally it works well. As you see, I've lost a few pieces over time. So we're going to grab 12 millimeter. Ooh, it might even be a 10. Looks like it's smaller, it's a 10. There we go, 10 over, so that's the cover on the back side. Of course, they put this gas tank here just so you can't fit a real size ratchet and get the job done fast. Oh yeah, maintenance. <laughs> Got a new carburetor to put on it. What's that? Lawn mowing season's coming up. There we go. Cover is off. That's the dust and dirt in my cover if you're interested. That is your carburetor, right here. Biggest thing to remember is to take in these bolts off. They're a little bit bigger than 10 mil, 12 millimeter. I used to like to use a deep socket here. Always a good time to kind of look and see, maybe even take a picture with your phone to see how everything's laid out. Unlike me, I've got a camera going here so I can go back to that. This is the fuel coming in. Another nice thing you can usually do with this is a pair of vice grips and you can grab onto that and just pinch it and close it. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna cheat here. I'm gonna remove this. It will stay. I'm gonna wiggle it off and fuel's gonna come out a little bit. Okay, so I know I have fuel now and I'm gonna tuck it up under here and out of the way. Just gravity here, the fuel won't come out. So I know my fuel's here. I know there's a clip on the bottom of this. I'm interested to see how it comes out. So straight down. So this is a solenoid here that shuts off the fuel. There's a arm here with a top piece. This is a good time to look at your brand new carburetor just to make sure everything kind of lines up. So there's my carburetor. 
looks like it's a direct drop-in replacement. Just remember where things go, obviously. And I should be able to drop in in just a few minutes here. This one's even got any fuel in it. Okay. Take that other side out. And this looks like a crankcase breather. I'm not going to try to remove all that right now. Put this screw back here. So now the carburetor should be free. Okay. Now I just pulled down some eight millimeters here to take these double-ended bolts out. So it looks like that's how they hold onto the carb. These are just little eight millimeter. Now, if they were loose to begin with, that one was really close to loose, but if they were loose to begin with, you might be getting an air leak. In this case, I was running a little bit lean, but I think that was because of the fuel. It was leaning out. Okay, so this one here, I'm gonna tilt the carburetor and unhook him. And this one just came off of over here. There's a real fine spring on this one. So I'm gonna take that off as well. Now we're gonna take our fancy new carburetor. And put this one through here. I'm gonna to try to get that retention spring drawn in like so. Bring this back out. Take this one. Put it down here. And I'll drive this one back where I saw it coming back over here. So now if there's a gasket missing here, or maybe a gasket for that side, check your gasket kit. So in this case, the gasket stuck onto the outside. Just peel it off carefully in case your other one doesn't have it or one that's not the right size here. This was definitely tightened down tight enough. So there's the gasket and match it up with one from inside your kit. Now this kit comes with a lot of extra new hoses and things like that that we may or may not use. We'll go ahead and pull that gasket because we will use that. So a lot of these kits are universal. So they're gonna be, you know, for many different models. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. I'm gonna take, to help me, and run these bolts through. I'm going to use it to hold my gasket on. So I'm going to run this one through. There we go. Now we line it up. Tighten this one. Perfect. Now tighten these tight, but not aggressively tight. They're going into plastic, it looks like, on the other end. And this is only eight millimeters, so I don't want to strip those. Okay, that's on. And as I throttle up, clear motion. This is the governor off of the engine that's going to go back and forth. This is the idle screw. And I believe that's the low or the high screw. We're going to find that out. Now here, if your kit came with extras, mine did not. But if your kit came with some extra filters, there's a little piece of hose here we could use. A uh, little cap looks like for adjusting that mixture screw. A lot of these that make it so you can't adjust them anymore. My old one of these retainers was kind of rusty, so I could replace that. This one has a cap covering the adjustment for the mixture. I'm going to grab the one from my new kit. Again, just visually line these things up. Looks like up is right there. <clears throat> okay. Now, we can come back to this fuel filter. It would be a good idea if you have them 
to occasionally replace this inline fuel filter. I know when I tilt this down, the fuel is flowing, so it is definitely getting fuel, but fuel starvation is a very common issue. And if this one is just a painted one and it's starting to rust or lose its spring intensity, you can replace this spring. Now, I know a couple people are gonna comment and say, you should be wearing safety glasses, John, but I'm not. Do as I say, not as I do. So I'm gonna put this new one on. Make it always in a way that you can grab it when you need to work on it. So there we go. Now, there is a solenoid on this one, which is a fuel shutoff on the bottom. If you hook it all up and it's not running, make sure you've hooked this up on the bottom. And it looks like it's keyed, so it'll only go one way. And there it is, it's back in. Okay, now technically, that is all you need to start it back up. We've got fuel, it's connected, it's attached, we got the solenoid. So we're gonna start it right up and see what happens. There you go. Just like that, it's idling like a kitten. This is awesome. So now would be a good time to put the breather back on, put the air intake right here over. You can also check this gasket. If you have a new gasket for that side, which this kit does not, you can replace this gasket on the intake. This one's rubber, it should work just fine. Put the PCV valve on the bottom, or PCV hose on the bottom. This would actually help the crankcase breather. This will help keep it from running lean. They tend to do that when they can breathe through that hole. Now remember on these, snug, not too tight. You don't want them coming out on their own. So there is a super duper simple carb replacement on a Poland 19.5 horsepower 300EX yard tractor. This will work on almost any Briggs and Stratton that you can get. Your model number will tell you which carburetor to get, so be real careful about that. I'll put the one I used in this, and you can see it's a 10 minute fix and you'll be up and running for the season. This has been John for johnfixeseverything.com. Great to have you here. And if you would like to subscribe, I would be honored and I'll be making more videos just like this for you.